Hello friends, hi everybody, this is Boaz Fader, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the weekly astrological message from July 8th to July 15th, 2017. Some chamomile tea, always good while making a video. So I want to begin with an apology, I was just before making my last video, I was doing the monthly forecast for July and things got mixed up in the video. Instead of saying that Mercury goes into the sign of Leo on the 5th, I said that Mars, the planet of male energy, goes into Leo on the 5th. And of course, Mars goes into Leo only on the 20th. So, my apologies and thank you for those of you who've noticed and helped me um, immediately correct it and put it in the, in the description. But basically, you know, we have many planets going into Leo through the month of July, including the Sun. And as this Leo energy gets heightened, we are going to experience uh, more enthusiasm, more creativity, more bravery, and basically a sense that we want to take part in the world with our hearts, be part of the creative process as much as we can. The only, and, 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 and that's, that's a great thing, that's a good thing, you know. I mean, utilize this Leo energy, utilize this to enjoy your life, have some joie de vivre and, and really and, and take part in the playfulness of life with our hearts. Really, you know, taking part makes us happy. The downfall, the downfall of Leo comes when it's too ego-centered, when it doesn't see the credibility and the significance of other people, of their message, of their way of doing things. When we become too sure of ourselves, when we become too proud, too vain, too extravagant, that's too pompous. That's when Leo falls from the stage. Up to that point, it can be the leader. It could be the herald of the creativity that is needed and accepted on the stage of life. So, um... Before we go into today, we're starting three long-term processes. Uh, two are going to be at their height on the 17th and one on the 23rd. After that, they're going to dissipate. Two processes uh, that are happening and are going to peak at the 17th of July are two squares. One is a little gloomy and vague and the other is um, surging ahead without any um, caution, let's say. I'm talking about the square between Venus in Gemini and uh, Neptune in Pisces, which can affect our love, our relationship, the way we earn money and, uh, and bring our income in and everything concerning with, us, uh, with our satisfaction in life just becomes a little bit more vague more misty, unclear, and we become much more sensitive and prone to a little depression. So, in, in regards to our love, relationship, and income, this is not the best two weeks to actually surge ahead and, and take decisions that have a long-term effect. This is a time to coil back inside and put essence on the spiritual, the mental and of course the emotional capacities and listen in more than talk. This is a time for stealth. This is a time for silence. This is a time for tranquility. This is not a time to go on running and let that white noise guide us. Okay, It is a time to let things settle down. And just to listen in. And things can become not as clear within those realms of love, relationship, or income during these next two weeks. And we can feel much less sure of ourselves. Again, don't react emotionally. This is also a time that we need to become much less naive. If somebody new comes into our life, if we're offered a new project during this time, it is not... It is not advised to see it with a too optimistic or naive glance. 
This is a time to see things not as we would like them to be or we are afraid that they might be, but as they really are. And if we need any help, it's a great time to get advice from three people that we trust, that know what they're speaking about in that certain subject and have nothing to gain or lose from our decision. So that's uh, one of the squares. The other square is the square between Mars, still in Cancer, and Uranus in, in Aries. And that really makes us much more impulsive and really speed ahead without thinking very much about where we're going. It's just about the need to act and act now and surge ahead and people become much less tolerant during this time and much more aggressive. We have to really watch ourselves uh, when we're working at home, in our job, and especially on the roads. And if we see other people that are impulsive and are surging ahead and are not careful enough, be tolerant and, and not give in to that play, not take part within that dynamic, and just stop that energy right there, you know? Don't take part in it. And uh, so an extra amount of tolerance and consideration and detachment from our impulsivity and our animalistic desires and needs. Because really we can lash out and we can have a much shorter um, fuse during these two weeks and as I said it peaks on the 17th then it dissipates away. Uh, the other aspect I wanted to talk about is the fact that not only we have this square between Mars and Uranus this Mars is going to conjunct the Sun on the 23rd and when Mars conjunct the Sun all of Mars's attributes are heightened and fueled so all our animalistic, our male impulsivity, desires, and of course need for action and getting ahead are heightened. Creativity is heightened as well. Aggressiveness and anger are heightened as well. So we have to really watch not to become aggressive, not to become too angry, not to go into fights or arguments with our surroundings, and utilize this energy in a positive manner of getting ahead in life. It's a great time for sports activities. It's a great time for any physical activity. It's a great time to also uh, indulge in the sins of the flesh. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm saying that, but it's a great time to be a little sexy. Okay? Um, but don't get carried away. Don't let that envelop you. A little bit detachment and consideration and looking at yourself and what you're doing from the side not fully immersed within that martial energy is the way to go. And of course we can utilize this for creation, for positive creation within our life. And if you feel like this energy is blocked up, go outside, do a walk, uh, start jogging, take a swim. Um, I'm doing it through martial arts. Let that energy loose. Don't pin it up inside you because then it could really become aggressive. And of course watch from aggressiveness in your surrounding. This is, this is a time that people become less civilized. So other than that, today is the 8th and on the 9th we have a full moon. Most amazing part of it is that it could really be transformative. But that transformation usually doesn't happen in a positive way because when the moon in Capricorn, which is hard already, full moon in Capricorn, is conjunct Pluto and opposing Mars, it brings all the darkest, deepest emotions and desires and, and, and un the mechanisms that we're not fully aware of come up to the surface. So this is a great time to see them at, in the light and to understand that they're, you know, we have this um, protocol that runs underneath our surface and causes us to act a certain way and thus change it 
And that is the greatness of this full moon, that it, it, it can be transformative both for us and other people around us. But we really have to watch out for arguments, from being angry, from being aggressive, from being frustrated and taking it out on other people or on ourselves. This is a harsh energy that we're dealing with. We cannot beautify it. We need to acknowledge that this is a harsh energy and utilize it the best way possible. Utilize it for positive change in our life. For taking out from our character the parts that we're not so proud of and working on them. As humans and not as animals. But understanding, especially with this full moon, that at least 50% of us is behemoth. 50% of us is animalistic. And if we do not acknowledge those desires and those needs and those cravings and those <laughs> then we might be even losing something in our lives. Because total detachment is not the answer. It's about utilizing that animal, utilizing that beast in a way that the human within us can admire. Other than that, on the 12th, we have the moon on the south mode, on the south node in uh, Aquarius. This is an erratic day, an erotic day, and we really have to concentrate through that day on balance and not giving in to our mental capacities or to our emotional ones totally, but bringing it into a place that tunes down both of those energies and puts them in a middle ground in a golden in uh, a golden path that is good for for um, for everybody around us and for ourselves. This is a day that has a bipolar energy that we need to tame. On the 13th, the moon is already in Pisces. It's conjunct Neptune. This is a great day for meditation, for creative endeavors, for spiritual endeavors, or just being outside in nature. Not a good day to do all your chores and all the things that you need to do in work and if you feel a little bit like an astronaut out of space and time and fuzzy you know your mind is a little bit um, slower and, and mistier than usual don't be angry with yourself this is a day that we're very sensitive in two days actually because also the 14th 14th the moon is still in Pisces but conjunct Chiron squaring Saturn so don't be so uh, judgmental regarding your own failures and regarding the ones of others. Be more encompassing and give some more TLC to yourself and to people around you. And if you do have to touch your own pains or, others people, or other people's pain, do it with a caress and not with a smack. Do it gently. On the 16th, we have another aggressive day the moon is in uh, Aries. That's already a lot of cardinal energies. And it's squaring the Sun and Mars and, 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 and Pluto, on the other hand, creating a T-square. Watch out for aggressiveness, both within you and in your surroundings. Understand that this could be a day in which we can erupt and just take an extra pack of tolerance and kindness and and smiles along with you through this day to carry on and to carry with you and to spread around whenever need be so i want to thank you for listening and of course for private lessons for lectures for courses and for private consultations of course you can reach me uh, all the details are in the end of the video and i'd love to hear your comments and I'd love you to share this video and just thank you for everything that you're giving back to me. Take care and goodbye.